This is the video you've all been waiting for. I know I'm a little late, but life's got in the way. I've been fixing my car, all kinds of problems there. Now I've made this video specifically to help e-bikers out. Many of us are having problems with motors and water ingress and this will definitely help you. I'm just going to ask one thing in return. Could you hit like and subscribe now? So I'm not going to show you how to remove an e-bike motor from a frame. There's lots of videos out there. The only thing I will say is take your pedals off first because it's going to be way harder later. Now on most motors, you're going to need a special tool to remove the spider. I tried ordering this from various places and it arrived wrong until I ordered it from Performance Line Bearings. I highly recommend them as a source of tools and bearings for your e-bike motor. Now I wouldn't recommend an impact gun to remove your spider because some of the shock is going through the clutch and the internal gears. However, I can get away with this because I've got a spare one. Once you've got it off the bike, give it a thorough good clean because you don't want any of that muck getting onto the inside. And then on the Yamaha PWX2, it's just 8mm bolts all the way around, so it's fairly easy with no special tools. There are a couple of specific lever points in order that you can separate the two halves without damaging the sealing surfaces. This is something you need to be a little bit careful of. There are two circlips on the outside of the crankshaft. Now these are actually more to stop the pedals being driven on too far and damaging the motor rather than actually retaining anything on the motor itself. Once you've got those off, it's a simple task just to lift off one of the side casings. And this is gonna immediately reveal all kinds of probably horrors. Oh my God, I just don't believe it. I've obviously just got them apart and this motor is really new, came from a dry rider, it was second hand, but it's only done a thousand miles and it's already got rust staining in the bottom of it from water ingress right on the edge of the circuit board. So a little bit more water getting on that circuit board, kaboom. I'll be throwing errors and desperately trying to save the motor like I was with this one. Now, if you look at my previous video, I shall put a link. This one got water in it, 1,200 miles, and through a load of errors, I quickly split the case, chucked it in an oven, dried it out, the errors went. Then I set about taking it all apart and servicing it and improving its waterproofness. So that's been done on this one. So if this gets a little bit of moisture in it, um, Yes, it's going to corrode things and stuff like that, but the circuit board should be all right in this one, whereas this one, not so much. So even though this is in reasonable shape, I'm going to replace the bearings with the upgraded full fill ball races, high heavy load ones, and then I'm going to set about waterproofing this perfectly good circuit board. Always feel a bit dodgy about it because I've got to take the whole thing out, I've got to treat it, clean it, spray it, stick it in an oven to a perfectly good circuit board that costs 200 quid to replace so yeah never very easy you know always feel a bit uneasy about doing that but that's what's got to be done so again look here this is on the newer motor this is rust all the way around here so i have already got water ingress so i was in two minds about stripping this perfectly good working newer motor but clearly i needed to do the work so I so this is the stock newer motor, which actually should be perfect at just a thousand miles, but clearly it's already got some water in it. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, there's various processes that I've worked out that can dramatically improve its lifespan. We're gonna start by replacing the main crank bearings, and we're gonna replace them ones packed with waterproof grease. And they're gonna be max fill, so full ball races, heavy duty, this makes them last longer. Combined with the silicon waterproof grease, it really helps prevent the water coming through the bearings. Now, there's a number of other things I'm going to do in this video a little bit later on. These motors are very poorly vented, and this is one of the reasons why they get water in them. So I'm gonna improve the ventilation. The other thing is the circuit board itself is extremely poorly waterproofed and none of the connections have any waterproofing on them whatsoever. So we're gonna take a look at that. 
Your first task is going to be to remove the circuit board to gain access to the other bearings. These screws are going to be tight, they don't want them coming undone and falling into the gears, but at the same time you need to be careful. If you slip and stab your screwdriver into the circuit board, it's going to be a write-off. The circuit board itself just lifts straight up and it's easy to remove and then underneath that gain, gains you access to the torque sensor and the torque sensor module, both of which are going to need some attention later. Underneath the torque sensor is a retaining circlip for one of the main bearings. This bearing on this side tends to fail a little bit less often. It's usually the chain side that gets all the water and muck in it. I can tell by trying to turn this one, this one's pretty knackered already at just a thousand miles. Now I want to remind you that this motor was working perfectly. No obvious signs of failure, but already it's got knackered bearings and water in it but it's just not obvious when you're riding by the time you kind of realize there's something wrong it's already a bit too late if you're throwing an error it really is kind of game over you what the point is to catch it early waterproof the motor as best as possible and I'm going to show you how to do it so this is probably the easiest bearing to remove first of all remove the retaining clip for the shaft and that'll just knock out. Then remove the retaining clip from the inside of the bearing and knock the bearing out with a suitable socket. You don't really need to be that careful when you're removing them, but you've got to be a lot more careful when putting them back in. Let's have a look at this bearing that I've removed and let's just see what it's like on the inside. I find using the spring from your pads is a really ideal tool for removing the seals without damaging them. It has a rounded edge to it, it's not too sharp but is thin and springy and strong. It just enables you to hook up the inside of the seal and pull them out. With a little bit of care you can do this to a brand new bearing, repack it with grease and place the seal back without damage. So the grease inside this bearing is just combined with dirt and turned into grinding paste. It's not doing its job anymore. It's worth buying Enduro Max bearings which are already pre-filled with waterproof grease. Now we're going to pop the next bearing out. Again, they come out relatively easily. None of them are particularly tight, they're only small, so I didn't need a press. This one's also completely knackered. Water has taken dirt inside the bearing combined with the grease and just turned it into grinding paste. I will put a link in the description to the bearings that I used. I haven't had a long term experience of them but they certainly on inspections seemed about the best that I've ever seen. They really are filled quite full with waterproof grease and that is the main thing. If there's no space for air or water air and water simply isn't going to get in. Now I'm being incredibly crude here, just giving you an idea that you don't really need special tools. You do just need a bit of care. Make sure you drive the bearing in straight. It will wedge if you don't. It's the same thing on the other side, just a smaller bearing. Just a block of wood to protect the casing and gently tap it into place. Replace the circlip on the inside that keeps the bearing in place. This is only on one side of the casing. Put the shaft back in. Now the main bearings have been replaced, it's time to move on to the circuit board. Now the circuit boards from the factory do come with a coating, but it's terribly thin and it really isn't fit for the purpose. Take my word for it, if your circuit board gets wet, it will throw errors as many people have experienced. On top of the poor coating, not one single connector or plug has any water resistance at all. So the first stage of the waterproofing process is to clean the circuit board. I use brake cleaner as it evaporates and leaves no residue and it just so happens it's quite good at dissolving the rather poor Yamaha coating. 
The next job is to mask up every single connector. We're spraying a non-conductive spray over the board and if you get it on your connectors, they're just not gonna work. I then warm the board up at 40 or 50 degrees in the oven. This will drive out any moisture from the board and make it ready for spraying. What you wouldn't want to do is spray a damp board and seal that moisture in permanently. Give it about 10 minutes in the oven is all it needs and it should be nice and warm and dry. Once it's ready, take it out of the oven and whiz round to your workshop. Whilst the board is still warm, spray a pretty heavy coating of conformal coating. Now I can hear some of you say that this is going to make the circuit board overheat. No, it won't. It's not air cooled. In fact, it's air heated. It gets really hot in there. The heat is taken away via heat sink and thermal pads. And this coating is dense enough to transfer the heat effectively. The next thing we're going to do is improve the ventilation. I'm drilling a hole to make a remote vent instead of the terrible idea of having a vent on the motor where it can get blocked by dirt and water and is just in a very poor location. It's very important that the internal air pressure and external air pressure are the same, otherwise it can suck water through the bearings. So that's why the ventilation is so important. Here I'm putting back the torque sensor. I'm greasing everything with either marine grease or silicone grease to help keep the water out and minimize any corrosion. Next goes into the torque sensor daughter board. Now none of these connections or plug is in any way water resistant. So what I'll be doing is as I plug each one in, I'll be coating the outside of the plug with silicon grease. This isn't completely waterproof, but it will give it some water and anti-corrosion resistance. You'll hear, see here that I'm coating the bottom of the board with an extra layer of silicone grease. This is where, you know, it's gonna literally sit in water if anything happens. The two pink areas you see on the casing are the heat sink and thermal pads. That's where the circuit board loses its heat to the outside. I'm plugging in the motherboard and then I'm going to coat those connections with silicone grease. Lots and lots of it. It's non-conductive and won't harm any of the board or gears. We then need to replace the securing screws, being careful not to slip and damage the board. Next goes in the clutch gear. Now, this is a plastic gear and it's really important it goes back clean. Any contamination embeds itself in the plastic and forms grinding paste. It's also important to use the correct grease and this is where I haven't skimped out and I have bought the correct grease from Performance Line Bearings. Apply a liberal amount and ensure it covers the whole of the gear. Some of it will fly off, but it won't do any harm, but it's just very important that this gear is looted nicely. The next thing to do is to put the free hub in. Yes, this is similar to what you have in your rear wheel. This allows you to stop pedaling and the motor to carry and run on. A twisting action gets the pulls to retract and it will drop on nice and easy. Then you need to lube the metal gear, in this case I'm doing it with marine grease. The reason for using marine grease is it's anti-corrosion and it doesn't wash out should any moisture or condensation get in the motor. The next step for assembly is to reseal the casing. So you need some RTV silicone sealant, which obviously black is the best idea. Just be very, very careful to go around with a nice coating all the way around the casing, not missing any spots. We are, after all, trying to make it more, not less waterproof. Yeah, 
Another step to be careful not to miss mm -hmm. is the thermal pads on the other side of the board. There are two integrated circuits which lose their heat to the casing. It's important to make sure you have those pads on and in place. Next, you can put the casing back together, tightening up just snugly initially. Give it about 30 minutes for the silicon to start going off and then do it up nice and tight. Final job, put the circ clips back on the outside of the crankshaft. So, so after you've done all of that highly evasive work to the motor, including drilling holes and oven cooking and spraying and siliconing everything, you get to the point where you're about to turn the motor on and you definitely have a little heart in your mouth moment. Is this gonna work off all of that fiddling around? It's alive and no errors. That's awesome. Hope this helps you out everybody. Please like and subscribe.